that's still struggling so much at this point in the season? Yeah, well, I'll just say tonight, you know, we just didn't, like I said, we just didn't do enough. Um, you know, had some opportunities and weren't able to take advantage of them. You guys had a lot of the same players in place last year as you do this year, and the offense was a lot more efficient. Anything specific that changed from last year to this year? Yeah, I don't know. Just, just got through with the game here. <laughs> basically, he's saying, I'm not going to throw my coordinators and my friends under the bus here. <laughs> That's basically what he's saying here. Taylor Twillman stays with us here because, listen, you're very connected when it comes to the crafts. Uh, give me your take here. Sum it all up for us, Taylor. Um, I would have called this in June, July, August in the training camp when you, when the Patriots wanted to tell all of us on the outside looking in that Joe Judge and Matt Patricia are going to right the ship, that they're going to get things going. Ninkovich knows this better than anyone. Gillette Stadium last night was dead. It was There was no energy whatsoever. There's no energy around the Patriots right now. And a lot of this comes off. And I understand, but when you watch, a lot of it comes off of Patricia and Judge. I get that. And Matt Jones isn't playing well. But the use of timeouts... The way that this team looks like something that Belichick has never done in his entire career. And yet when you tell the quarterback after his rookie year where everyone on this network was telling me he's the next best thing, he's coming off of Josh McDaniels, and you hand him Matt Patricia and Joe Judge and then tell the fan base, let's get excited for this. They are in purgatory with the direction they're going. And Bill Belichick knows it but he's not going to tell you after the game. He's just not going to because he hasn't. But when you look at the way this team is going in the future, go to ESPN+. Plus. Great article online right now. Top 25 players in the NFL under the age of 24. Not a single Patriots player was even mentioned in the top 25 or the honorable mention. They have nowhere to go. They're not going anywhere. Season's over. Done. Mm-mm. Bye. Wow. Gone. Uh, Nico, you are a resident Patriot here. Uh, you heard what Taylor said. Uh, what about for this fan base, the direction of yeah. this team, and, and Mac Jones then going forward? I, I agree. I agree with Taylor. Look, the, I was at the game. I drove in last night. I'm tired right now because I had to go to that game. And I'm, th- it was dead. And the fans are booing and questioning what the heck are we doing because even when you're down at the end of the game you want to try and push the ball down the field you want to try and get back in the game it didn't even seem like they wanted to try to score they were like oh let's just try and make this manageable let's put some some more yards on by throwing to the flat let's run the ball here let's run the ball there it was just stagnant and it's really hard to watch that type of offense so I agree that This is a bad situation, and again, this is something we haven't seen before with the Patriots. You haven't seen a Patriot team give up basically 14 points on special teams the week before and lose a game because of special teams. That's odd, right? So then this week, you look at just the defense can't stop anything. You know, they're running the ball through the defense, something that we don't see happen often. We are thinking the Patriots defense was supposed to be this all everything, and every team that they play that's decent, has been able to move the ball pretty easily on them. So you look at offense, bad, defense, bad, special teams, bad. It's bad all the way around, and they're 500 team for a reason. So we can't expect this team to make a miraculous recovery here and make a playoff push. I just, I just don't see it happening. I just watch the tape. I try to be real in the evaluation. What they're putting on tape isn't good. Uh, they got a legendary coach, RC. What, what can they do? Well, I think the the first thing about that legendary coach is I like the fact that he refused uh, to point fingers. I think Chris Paul is somewhere wishing that other people exercise this type of discretion uh, when it came to things uh, lately. So, so that part, that's it. So, so that part, I think, I think that's big. I think that's big. He's talking about Kanye. But go ahead, go ahead. That's a lesson. That is a lesson to be learned. you know, I think uh, I think when you when you look at this team, everything has to now come back to Bill Belichick. And when Nico was talking about it in the first hour, Bill Belichick has went out and shopped for the groceries that he is now cooking up Thanksgiving meals with, right? He he goes, he controls the draft. He's the GM. He's the guy that's scouting and selecting 
the talent. And so when Taylor speaks of no one on that team being on the, the 25 under 25 list, that's part of Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick can't point fingers at Matt Patricia and Joe Judge because Bill Belichick handpicked both of those men to come back and lead their young quarterback and also lead their offense. And so as much as we want to say, the, the fall off has been because Matt Patricia shouldn't be the OC or shouldn't be calling plays or Joe Judge shouldn't be the quarterback coach entrusted with taking Mac Jones from a first year, which is very promising, to a second year. That was also Bill Belichick's final call. And then all in the end when it comes to game planning and play calling and complimentary football, Bill Belichick is also in charge of that. And so it always brings me back to this question. Was it Bill Belichick? Or was it Tom Brady? Or did the combination of both bring you six championships? What we're seeing right now is that this Bill Belichick with this team in the last three years is failing, and I don't see how it gets better anytime soon. Brooke, what does it remind you of? Well, first of all, Ryan's over here talking about shopping for groceries. In the past, for the Thanksgiving meal, Belichick already had the turkey. It was already seasoned. It was in the oven. Like, it was cooking. It was great because he had Brady. The difference to me, yes, I know that the coaches have changed from last year to this year. The difference is that in the past they had Brady, and that's not to say that Brady made Belichick or Brady made the Patriots, but it shows how hard it is to move on from a franchise quarterback, to go from one franchise guy to another. There's going to be a time when you're probably going to be in the quarterback wilderness a little bit. The Steelers are experiencing that right now with Ben Roethlisberger. No, he wasn't playing perfect at the end, but you still felt like you had a chance because of Ben Roethlisberger. They changed the OC, things like that in Pittsburgh, and yet – Things weren't smooth, but he still had the latitude to take over and, and audible and do what he wanted to do on the field. Mac Jones doesn't have that. To me, the, the moves that they are making right now are all ripple effects of moving on from Brady. And I think that that has put them in the position that they're in right now. And it just shows how hard it is to kind of evolve past that. It's why I think you're going to see teams like the Packers be, you know, struggle when it comes to the Aaron Rodgers decision because they see teams like the Steelers and the Patriots that have been good for a long time not really know where to go from there. We're so used to these guys winning Super Bowls, winning this division, and now we're watching them struggle. Dare I say, what does this loss mean for them? Do they blow this thing up? It seems like they're rebuilding. I mean, that's what it looks like. The way they've been playing this season, the coaches that they've hired, they haven't gotten, gone and went and got real offensive coaches. They've gotten guys who Belichick has worked with and he knows and he's comfortable with to go and coach your quarter. It seems like it's a rebuilding year in so many ways. It is a rebuilding year in so many ways. But then the question is, what are you building to and who is it going to be with? Bill Belichick, 70 years old. Does he want to keep on coaching? What does that look like? Who, what pieces yeah. are you building? You're going to get a new offensive coordinator. What will that look like in the future? Because the past, the last three years, and the present currently right now and last night, is not looking pretty. And so the reason why, obviously, Josh McDaniels not being there is huge. He was there for all of Tom Brady's championships and the time that he was gone, Brady wasn't winning, at least when he was in Tampa. That's part of the reason why. The other part is, what does Belichick have to your Thanksgiving dinner point? What are the sides? Like, who's going to be the new turkey? What are, there is a stuff in the mac and cheese. Like, what pieces do we have? Sides to help this are team the win? most important hey, part, Sacho. They are. They are. The sides, the sides, the sides are the most important part. Hey, and the sides, the sides, are the, change the, point. the sides are the most important part. I agree with that. And when you think back when the Patriots were winning Super Bowls, the no, sides no of the, sides. the turkey had sides of Gronkowski yeah. and Wes and Welker and Edelman and, 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 and Dola Bitch. and um, Garrett Blunt and running Nika the football. Bitch. Like, it, well, I was on defense. I'm talking offensive sides here. We're talking offensive sides. So, so anyway, I'm talking they about they year. don't have like go to you don't just pick Rob Gronkowski in a draft. Don't they don't they don't know. just come up every year. It's like once in 10 years that you land a guy that's that much of a game changer. They don't they don't have that guy right now. They don't have a game changer where a defense has to game plan against one guy or else they're going to beat exactly. you. They don't have that. Taylor, you're so plugged in, especially with the Crafts. You know them very well. How does Robert Kraft, as an owner, look to Bill Belichick, who has delivered you Super Bowls, has made you a billionaire, say, hey, look, man, you need to change this whole thing up. I don't like these offensive guys. How does he say that to this guy? Well, there's a lot of history there, though, Brian, right? So that, that history, that, that blood's thicker than water a little bit, so much so that – they allowed Bill Belichick to choose the Patriots and allowed Tom Brady to leave on and go to Tampa. So that's a difficult 
conversation there to be had. And I think Nikovic knows this better than anyone. It's interesting to me that at age 70, what does Bill Belichick really want to do? Because in my opinion, if the whole goal out of this is to beat Don Shula and set the record, that's where I am really curious and honestly concerned that you haven't gone out and got like an A.J. Brown for Jalen Hurts in Philadelphia. There is not a single side that the opposition looks at on the offensive side and says, wait a minute, I'm concerned. And Stevenson is a horse. He's an absolute tank. You guys know this better than me. But the opposition isn't worried about Stevenson. They're not worried about Mac Jones. They're not worried about anyone. And I'd argue with, with Brooke right now in, in the sense, if Tom Brady was the quarterback in his prime in this spot, Okay, maybe what? They're seven and five? Maybe they're eight and four? I don't. Th this team does not have enough horses to run the course. And at some point, Robert Kraft and Jonathan Kraft are going to have to look at it and say, you know what? We've got to really rebuild because we are stuck in purgatory at six and six in a division that's on the up and up, and we're actually going the opposite way. Yeah, you're right about that. I mean, you look at the Miami, you look yeah, at the, the Jets, Jets, all the other teams, the Bills, all ascending. And then meanwhile, it's the Patriots uh, descending. Yeah. Taylor, appreciate it, man. Hey, coming up, speaking of those Dolphins, Tua Tagovailoa hasn't played in a playoff game. Jimmy G.